Well, in trying to get the first harness off, I broke the retainer clip, so that's awesome. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do about this, guys. Dang it. Hey guys, it's Jeff. Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we are working on my 2012 F-150 EcoBoost. We're going to be installing these Excel high-performance coils, but before we get to that, we have a few other things that we need to do. And the first thing we're gonna do is clean this K&N air filter because, as you can see, it's pretty disgusting. All right, filter is out and look at all the nastiness. This thing really needs to be cleaned. All right guys, the filter is all clean and I am going to set it right there and let it dry in the sun for a little bit. And once it's dry, we will apply some filter oil. What we're gonna do now is empty this oil catch can. And for those of you who aren't familiar with these, they are a great little mod. And what they do is they catch oil vapor and fumes that the PCV system pulls from the crankcase and routes back down into the engine through the intake to be burned off. By catching the oil vapor and fumes and preventing it from getting back into the intake in the engine, it keeps your intake clean and prevents engine sludge. And this is especially true with forced induction engines. So as you can see, it's not too full. It looks like it's about a fourth of the way full. I think they generally recommend emptying these out every oil change, but I tend to do it a little more frequently than that. And I'm not sure if you can see that very well, but it basically looks like old used oil and it smells like oil and gas. I'm just gonna clean this out really good before I put it back on. Look at that. Gross. All right guys, there we go. So basically all that crap that I just emptied out of that catch can would have gone back into the intake and into the engine, which is no bueno. So I'm glad I did this mod to help keep my engine a little cleaner. Now let's change the windshield wipers. So I've had this truck for about three Utah winters and I haven't changed the wiper blades yet. These ones that are on here are pretty toast, so let's put on some new ones. Yeah, I'd say these old ones are cooked. All right, guys, so just moving to the inside of the truck for a minute, I bought a WizGear phone mount to install on the dash. I'm not really crazy about the spots I have to put my phone. I know that sounds terrible to talk about first world problems, but if I put it up here, it kind of gets cooked by the sun. If I put it down here in this little cubby hole, it moves around and falls out. And if I put it here on this center console, it kind of gets in the way. So. I thought I would mount one of these on the dash and it would give me a better spot to put my phone. I've seen a few people use these mounts and they look pretty cool, so I thought I'd give it a try. So I think the best spot for it would be right here, right below the trailer brake control. I think that's a really good accessible spot for my phone and it shouldn't interfere with any of the access to the trailer brake. Not that I tow anything, but got to keep things functional, you know? So the way it works is this mount is magnetized and basically what you do is you take off your phone cover put one of these magnetized plates inside the phone cover and then put it back on. 
and then you can stick your phone on the mount and it'll hold it. The mount comes with this 3M adhesive backing, so I just need to use this wipe that's supplied in the kit to clean the surface and then stick it on. All right, guys, there you go. Looks pretty good. I wanna put my phone on it to show you guys, but I actually film with my phone, so I'm not sure how I can do that. There we go. See, it works. <laughs> Sorry guys, I couldn't resist. Here's a picture of what it looks like. I know that in the picture, it looks like the phone is blocking the trailer brake controller, but it's not. I have plenty of room to reach back there and use it if needed. Overall guys, I think this turned out really nice and I'm excited to start using it. All right, you guys, so with all of that out of the way, let's go ahead and install these Excel coil packs. These are an upgrade from the factory coils in that they produce a stronger, more efficient spark which should result in slightly more power, slightly better throttle response, and slightly better gas mileage. I'm not having any issues with the coils that are currently in the truck. They're working fine, but they do have 120,000 miles on them, so I figure it's a good time to upgrade. I did replace the spark plugs right after I bought the truck, so these coils are kind of the last piece I want to add to the ignition system. So to get started, I'm going to remove the negative cable to the battery and this engine cover. So to get the coils out, I just have to remove this eight millimeter bolt and then disconnect the wiring harness and the coil should come right out. Well, in trying to get the first harness off, I broke the retainer clip. So that's awesome. You gotta love working on cars. <laughs> the harness is off and I can pull out the coil. And there you go. I'm not sure if there's anything I can do about breaking the clip other than replacing this connector portion of the harness. Maybe just buying a new one and splicing it in. I don't know. But once I get the new coil in, I'll plug in this harness and see how well it's staying on. If it's not staying on very well, I'll have to figure something out. All right, here's a look at the new coil. They do not come with dielectric grease, so I went ahead and put a little in there. So let's install this one and see how that connector feels. Yeah, it doesn't feel good. All right, one down, five more to go. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do about this, guys. It doesn't seem to stay on there very well. When I push it down, it kind of works its way back off a little bit, so. Anyway, I'll put in the rest of the coils and then come back to this and see if I can think of anything. All right, the passenger side is done. Check it out. No other issues with any of the other coils or the harnesses. And I'm just so bummed that this one broke. So if you're doing yours, be careful. This plastic is old and brittle and it can break pretty easily. If you look at this connector compared to the others, it looks like it's in pretty much the same spot. So maybe it'll hold, but I'd feel a lot better if I had a clip on there. Okay guys, the driver's side is all done and I didn't have any issues on this side. I just had to remove this PCV hose as well as that connector right there to get better access, but everything went well and everything looks good on this side. As I played around a little bit more with the harness that broke, I was able to verify that the connector did plug in properly and it is seated properly so it's just a matter of is it going to back out due to vibration or everyday driving so i guess that's something i'll have to watch for until i can figure out a solution let me know in the comments below what you guys think i am going to put everything back together 
get the air filter back in, and then let's go for a ride and see how it drives. I just made sure the filter is all dry, and before I put it back in, I'm going to apply some of this k and filter oil. Check out all the smoke that blew in, guys. It's really hazy now, and it must be from all the wildfires in California. It's pretty crazy. Okay, guys, everything is all buttoned up. We got the filter back in place. We've got the engine cover back on and the battery is reconnected. By the way, guys, I know my engine bay is super dirty and it needs to be clean. So that is something that's on my to-do list, I promise. Well, at least she started. So far, so good. I will most likely have to drive this truck around for a while before I can formulate any final conclusions, but here are my initial thoughts. The idle seems to be a little smoother. The throttle response does seem a little bit crisper and the truck does seem to have a little more pickup. Now, I'm just using my butt dyno, so I'm sorry if that triggers some of you, but my butt dyno does have 20 years of experience, so I trust it. And the truck doesn't seem to be missing at all, so I think that connector is securely fastened but time will tell whether it backs itself off and I have a problem. But overall, as of right now, the truck feels great. Okay guys, I'm back home and there's one more thing I gotta do before I let you go and that is set off this air freshener bomb inside the truck. This is the same one that my buddy Trevor set off in his Fusion when we changed his cabin air filter. Pina colada. Pineapple coconut, that's what that is, it's Spanish. Hablo español. And it smelled pretty good, so I'm gonna give it a try. Man, that smells really good. All right guys, we're gonna let things marinate in there for a minute. That does it for this video. Thanks so much for working on my truck with me. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a big thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe and take care. I'll see you in the next one.